Over the years, we've made several videos on this channel about how to keep an electric car in good condition, including explaining why you should probably get your car serviced regularly, how to keep your battery pack healthy, and what the differences are between summer and winter driving in your EV. But as more and more people make the switch from gasoline to electric, and as the number of affordable used plug-in cars increases, we're starting to hear from people on this channel who want specific advice over which car they should or shouldn't buy. Many of you just want to know which car would be best for a given commute or are worried that you may be left with a range that's just outside that of what you really need. But more recently, I've started to hear from several people in hot places like Arizona and Southern California in the US, wondering how specific make and models of cars will cope in the summer heat, having heard horror stories about premature battery degradation and vehicles failing to rapid charge effectively in hot climates. And so, as I sometimes do on this channel, I decided to make a video to explain it all. It's time for a little science lesson. While modern lithium-ion battery packs are pretty darned robust, and can very often outlive the life of the vehicle they were put in originally. How long they last depends on how they're treated in their life. And when we're talking about lithium ion battery pack longevity, what we're really talking about is the battery's ability to store charge and then give that charge up back again. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of how a battery works and what happens with battery degradation, but in its simplest form, the chemical spaces on the electrodes where electrons fit in are damaged over time, changing the chemical compounds in the battery and making it harder for as many electrons to fit as once could. This is primarily caused by heat since heat energy added to a chemical compound can change how the various bonds within that compound are made and in some cases can even transform the compound into something else. Since the action of pulling energy out of a battery pack at high currents causes the battery pack to heat due to internal resistance in the pack, this process is pretty much unavoidable. That said, in most modern electric car battery packs, the degradation caused by normal use is negligible over the lifetime of the battery. But simply put, the less spaces for electrons to fit on the electrode, the less charge the battery can store, and the smaller the range the car can provide. I know, I know, I just grossly oversimplified the process and some people will be angry, but I'm a music major, not a chemistry major, and that in a nutshell, at a very electrochemistry one-on-one -on -one level, is what really happens when battery degradation occurs. So naturally, you want to avoid it at all costs. And that brings me back to electric cars and why some are better than others in hot climates. You see, if adding heat to a battery pack causes more chemical changes to occur within the battery itself, you want to keep the battery at a comfortable temperature where those changes are kept to an absolute minimum. That, if you're interested, happens to be about room temperature for most lithium-ion battery chemistries out there. Which is why many electric cars feature liquid-cooled battery packs where cooling solution is pumped through specially designed plates or channels embedded into or below the battery cells. These cooling systems help the battery pack stay warm in winter and cool in summer and should, in optimum conditions, keep battery degradation to an absolute minimum. These systems are usually called active cooling systems. Other cars use air cooling, where ambient air is either channeled over the battery pack while the car is moving, or forced into the battery pack using fans. Since these systems do not actively cool the air, just rely on the movement of it, they're called passive cooling systems. And as I'm sure you'll know, if air is already warm, it's not going to help cool down a battery pack as much as a liquid refrigerant pumped around in the battery. In everyday use, this difference between passive and active cooling shouldn't affect the majority of EV drivers if they live in temperate climates. The only exception to this is multiple rapid charging sessions on a single trip, which can heat a passively cooled battery pack up very quickly and cause the car to throttle battery charging current, a la Nissan RapidGate, to protect the battery pack. But if you live in a hot climate where summer temperatures regularly hit triple digits Fahrenheit, that's the upper 30 Celsius, or as a Brit, that's too damn hot, buying an electric car with a passively cooled battery pack like the Nissan Leaf or Volkswagen e-Golf isn't a smart move, unless you know for sure you've got somewhere cool to park it and charge it. Even then, you're better off with a car with liquid cooling. So for those who ask about buying a Nissan Leaf in Arizona, well, I wouldn't do it. While I love the first generation Nissan Leaf, 
We own one right now and it's the second leaf we've owned. I know that subjecting its battery pack to extreme summer heat without active cooling would kill the battery pack far more quickly than I would like. Sure, we're getting the usual battery degradation for the Nissan Leaf, but it would be very, very much accelerated if we were in a hot place. In short then, if you're looking for a used EV in a hot place, make sure you pick one with active cooling, and if you're unsure, double check before you buy. Oh, and if you do buy an EV with active cooling, be sure to keep it plugged in when you're not using it if there is power available, because it helps ensure you won't run the battery pack down trying to keep the same cool. Well, that's it. As always, hit the notification bell to hear the moment a new show is uploaded. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to both this channel and Transport Evolved Take Two. You can support us using the usual links below and if you'd like, buy something from our shop. You don't have to, but it would be nice. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep evolving. <laughs> <laughs>